Hey everybody, this is James, Empty Pockets Garage, bringing you another video on the situation that is happening in our town in collaboration with a friend of mine. This uh, will probably surprise some people, and I'm afraid some people in this town won't be surprised at all. So, without further ado, here's the video. A lot of people in Springfield feel left behind. They're looking for answers. Let's find some. This is Mark. He's a concerned citizen. He makes a lot of appearances at the city commission meetings. Let's hear what he has to say. I've heard people from that bench insinuate that our concerns are rooted in some kind of racial animosity. I've heard uh, that Springfield New Sun has written similar stories. The NAACP was to have a struggle session to help people deal with uh, white people deal with their uh, racial problems. But the whole time I've been here, coming to these meetings for the last couple of months, I hear concerns about public housing, the, the availability of housing, affordable housing, um, people getting kicked out of their homes because their landlords are rent, raising their rent to accommodate uh, migrants whose uh, income is subsidized federally. George Ten is a name that most of Springfield knows by now. He runs a staffing agency that employs a lot of Haitian migrants here in Springfield, he also has other staffing agency businesses around Ohio. Not only is he involved in staffing for companies around Springfield, but he's also heavily involved in the real estate business. Currently, he's under investigation by FBI for human trafficking. If there's one thing that should unite everybody involved in this conversation, it's that you should not be taking advantage of disadvantaged people. I think that we can all get behind that simple idea. Mr. Ten is not the only person in Springfield to own numerous properties. He operates under Ten Enterprises, LLC. Here on the Clark County, Ohio County Auditor website, you can see Ten Enterprises. This parcel here is the first diversity hiring center. But he's not the worst offender, and I think that there are enough eyes on him right now that whatever is to be found about any wrongdoing will be found. And I don't want to let anyone else slip through the cracks. That brings me to Springfield Houses, LLC. Springfield Houses, LLC owns 75 parcels of land. This was a housing project that was given to Jeffrey Dennis. So to make this as short as possible, Mr. Dennis bought 79 parcels in Springfield for $2.3 million, and then he put some of them into an LLC. I know it says 58 there. I wish I knew how the math on this worked, but they do own and hold 75 properties in Springfield right now. And almost every single one of those 75 properties are valued equally at $14,900. Now, I'm just going to go out on a limb here and guess that the renters who live there probably pay $700 a month, and they do that for 12 months, and these properties were sold to Jeffrey back in 2021. It's now 2024, so let's say, mm, coming up on three years here real soon. Yeah, that's, um, you've already paid more than the house is worth, according to what it's appraised at. And keep in mind, this was sold in 2023, just last year, and it was appraised at 14.9. Kind of interesting. That's a pretty decent sized house for $14,000. In this economy, I'd guess it'd go for 140,000, 150,000. It's a newer area, actually. They've kind of developed that area, so it's probably 160. Yeah, my main point here is that you're not going to get that house. You're locked out of it. So while that 14900 seems like a good price on a house, it's actually just there for the LLC for tax purposes. Okay, so when people say that there's a housing shortage and there's all of these LLCs buying up all the homes, now you know why. When Springfield goes into a contract with these home developers, they don't actually sell these houses to regular families they let the LLCs keep them so that they can all become renters. You will own nothing. Say it with me. You will own nothing and be happy. That's what you're going to turn your whole town into if you do that. You're going to turn everyone into a bunch of renters, keeping them poor forever, never having equity in a home, never having anything to pass down to future generations. You will have no family wealth. 
specifically because of this one piece of software they have called the Yield Star. And Yield Star collects information from a bunch of different landlords, information about all the leases that they have going on in the building, the occupancy rates of the building, which units are empty, which units are full, and combines it with publicly available data. And it has the result, in their own words, of maximizing asset performance. <laughs> That's what they describe it as. I'm sure you can figure out what that means. It effectively charge the absolute maximum possible and to collude with other landlords in order to do the same. One executive from the, the company who operates this software was asked whether he believed the software had a role to play in housing prices. And this is what he answered. We are seeing unprecedented rent growth, 14.5% uh, gr uh, uh, growth, lease over lease on new leases. Uh, never before have we seen these numbers. So Andrew, I'll start with you. Uh, what is the role of revenue management in some of the price growth we're seeing right now? Well, I think it's I think it's driving it quite honestly, because when you think about it, as a property manager, very few of us would be willing to actually raise rents double digit within a single month by doing it manually. So that opportunity to actually review price systemically on a day-to-day -day basis with optimized rents is what's driving that growth, in my opinion. Like, do these people like hear what they're saying? Because this, this sounds like super villain stuff. One of the developers of the algorithm uh, actually said that it was conceived to solve the problem of leasing agents having too much empathy compared to computer generated pricing. And this software eliminated uh, empathy from the equation of housing people. And remind me again, who's going to be paying those prices? To accommodate uh, migrants whose uh, income is subsidized federally. Another question I would have is where does the actual funding come from for all the support that uh, immigrants get? Thank you. Say, where does the additional funding come from? Yeah, where's, where does the funding come from for the, you know, a variety of the services they receive? Uh, that's all federal funds that they would receive. Okay, all of it's federal. There's no state funding. Yes. But as egregious as all of this appears, there's still one property that I want to take a look at. Again, I'm going to remind everybody that this is all publicly available information. You can look it all up on the Clark County Auditor's website or the Recorder's website, or these commission meetings are very informative. All that we ask is a little humanity. Pray for us, pray with us, and uh, just um, we open for conversation. We have that center just to make sure that people who do, who do not understand they can come to us and we can have a conversation and make sure that everybody is living at peace in the city. Thank you very much. Thank you. Excuse me, sir. Yes, yes. Excuse me, sir. Can you come back? Do you have the, um, the um, address to the center? For now, we are currently at the 1530 South Springs uh, South Yellow, Yellow Spring Street. Street. Okay. Uh, that's where we are. Now. Well, it was formerly the L. Uh, yes, okay. definitely. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so and much. And what are your hours of operation? We open from uh, nine to five, uh, from Monday to Friday. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I just want to thank you for being here, having the courage. Thank you. Okay, so when I listen to this man, he seems like he's trying to bridge the gap between the locals and the Haitian community. He seems earnest in what he's saying. I wouldn't wish any ill will on this man. I wouldn't want to rob him blind. You'd have to be some kind of monster to take advantage of this person. You can probably see where I'm going with this. Brace yourself. This is the property right here. It's valued at... $41,860. As you can see, it belongs to the First Haitian Evangelical Church of Springfield. Let's check the bill of sale. All right, so it looks like back in the day it was sold for $50,000. Between a couple people, I don't know. And then Leslie Young sold it to Sheila Rice for $30,000. And then Sheila Rice sold it to the First Haitian Evangelical Church of... What? $249,000 six years later. <laughs> I'm so tired. <laughs> I just... Uh, you know, when I recorded this, I was trying to make it sound fun. <laughs> but I can't even make this sound funny. Like, this is just sad. But you know what makes it more sad? I know the name Sheila Rice. 
please tell me she is not somebody that we elected and put into power. Oh, come on! Oh, she's somebody that we elected and we put into power. She is the Clark County's Clerk of Municipal Courts. The first black elected county official. I don't know why that makes it some kind of specific accomplishment, but uh, like our first black mayor was like in 1966. Yeah, there it is. There you go. <laughs> Get it, girl. Man, I, I can't I can't even bring myself to point out this right here. Oh. <laughs> I mean, if I made a quarter million dollars on some helpless refugees that were arriving here and just trying to set up shop. I don't know if I could be dancing and partying like that. That's just me, but I have a soul. I don't know. Eh, you know what else I have? A good sense of humor. You know, the irony of having these people tell you to have compassion for the less fortunate while at the same time robbing them blind, taking government tax dollars, and make no mistake, that's how she was able to get them to pay that crazy price for that old building that was once only $30,000. To accommodate uh, migrants whose uh, income is subsidized, Federally. The only improvements made to that lot, according to the tax forms, was a thousand something dollars for pavement. This woman is price gouging the Haitian community right out of the gate. Is that how you act blue? Let's find out more about who she is. Sheila Rice for Clerk of Courts 2020. Her campaign manager was Crystal Phillips. You might know Crystal Phillips today as Crystal Brown, this kind lady here. She's had quite a number of things to say about this community and the people that come to speak. During the break, Crystal forgot to turn her mic off and announced to the entire city that we don't give a shit. With that statement, Crystal single-handedly proved that this is how the citizens of this city are talked about between yourselves. This is where our concerns and fears get us in your eyes. Thanks, Crystal. Thanks for that. And just so there's no confusion on who this person is, because I know a lot of you are going to go to the clerk of courts and be like, oh my gosh, her name's not the same. Yeah, this is Sheila Rice, unmarried, state of Ohio, for valuable consideration. Da, da, da. You get it. And going back to her little campaign ad from 2020 right here, uh, if we scroll down, you can see she says, uh, I am currently also a foreclosure appraiser for the Clark County Sheriff's Office, as well as the small business owner in the county with a very successful event center called The L. We had the 1530 South Springs, uh, South Yellow Spring Springs Street, Street. Okay. Uh, th that's where we are now. Well, it was formerly the L. Uh, yes, okay. definitely. Okay. Thank you. But to add even more stink to this scratch and sniff sticker, over here we can see Sheila Rice's contract, the address that she has listed, whose tax mail address is 638 West Grand Springfield. You can plug that right back in on the Clark County Auditor. And here it is 638 West Grand. Guess who owns it? Springfield Houses LLC. No, there is no escape. Now, did Sheila do anything wrong legally? I don't know. But you did price gouge a church, and I don't care if you redress the inside with new plaster and flooring. It ain't worth $250,000. Stop! You make the baby Jijos cry. I guess the point of the story, the little adventure that we've gone on here, is to show that even though the city of Springfield might be investing in housing, it's not investing in you. You cannot trust anyone to do that but yourself. 
The people in charge do not have their ear to the ground, they don't know what's going on, and they're easily duped into buying into things that do not help anyone. And now you've got the executive in, 70 rooms and only 34 are used because the others aren't habitable, and now I hear it's closing. <coughs> These are two decisions that somebody has to pay for passing this. It is such an abuse of taxpayer money. You use that $44 million through the uh, American Whatever Act, it's still wasted taxpayer money down the drains. If we collectively, as cities across the United States, spent money like those hotels, we'd be $20 trillion. Gary, I want to encourage yep. you to have a second meeting with our law department um, about the issues of the contract and that property. I know that we followed everything we were supposed to do uh, when that property was purchased. So thank you. Your time is up. We'll have our next speaker. The, and the executive end is not closing. That's false. It's investing in the LLCs. Yes, there are buildings out there that people can sleep in. But those do not add value to the community. It extracts value from the community. And that's something very important that you need to remember when you are a renter. And yet, time and time again, you'll see people coming to City Hall to prop up the Haitian community. They'll say things like, they add value to our city. Springfield was dying. They're hardworking, industrious people. I work with them every day. Yes, you work with them every day. You get paid to do that. You have a vested interest in keeping them here. In Springfield, we have had a massive influx of immigrants looking for a better life. And as they sought to build their community just to the south of us here, they faced limited opportunity because they were seen as dirty, bringing disease and crime with them, and speaking in a crude foreign tongue. So the only odd job opportunities available to them were the dirtiest menial jobs that no one wanted. And that's why they became firefighters and police officers. First ones in the city, in fact. You have a vested interest in keeping them here. That doesn't make you a saint. It makes you complicit in their suffering and abuse. Remember, the jobs that you're pushing them into are run by ultra-wealthy tycoons who have the hiring agencies locked down. Those same people charge them to find jobs and then charge them rent and charge them again for shuttling them back and forth to work. And you keep them in this cycle of indentured servitude. You are allowing these rich organizations to pay them nothing so that rents and food prices soar while labor gets cheaper and cheaper. There was a time not too long ago when we were a dying mid-sized city, when we were hemorrhaging our people and our jobs to other places. And here, the good Lord heard our prayers and brought us the gift of the Haitian immigrant community. You are making the problems worse by not investing in American workers. I don't dislike the Haitians at all. I don't mind them being here. But our government needs to be hands-off because they are abusing these people. And when I say our government, I mean our city officials as well. To date, nothing has changed. And the result is the failed disaster capitalism we see in Haiti, where aid has become an industry of for-profit companies. In fact, only a month after the earthquake, our own U.S. ambassador was quoted in a leaked document claiming the gold rush is on. Jamie McGregor is the CEO of McGregor Metal, which makes welded parts for the auto and farm industries. Right now, about 10% of his workforce is Haitian, over 30 employees. I wish I had 30 more. Our Haitian associates come to work every day. They don't have a drug problem. They'll stay at their machine. They'll achieve their numbers. They are here to work. And so in general, that's, that's a stark difference from what we're used to in our community. <laughs> oh, it's funny because it's true. The Americans have grown so comfortable, untrustworthy, and drug-addled that they can't hold down a job. I do understand that that problem is a two-way street. But the only true way out of this is to invest in the American worker to treat people humanely and give them a livable wage. We have to pry these properties out of the hands of the LLCs. We have to dismantle these temporary employment agencies. 
If you really want a good argument against this type of immigration and worker replacement, then just suggest that all the Haitians get together and form a workers' union. Just watch how fast everyone exposes their real agenda. But again, I'm just the messenger. And now these same companies are using lobbying groups to ensure reforms never come. You know, it's often said that waste, inefficiency, corruption, these are problems that are unique to the developing world, that are unique to Haiti. And the reality is that these are actually fundamental aspects of the U.S. foreign aid complex. Instead of relying on potentially corrupt money, we simply give it to U.S. companies and allow them to take 25% off the top. It's a different form of corruption. You know, without realizing that, then you know, we will continue to make the same mistakes again going forward. I want to thank James at Empty Pockets Garage for sharing my original story on his YouTube channel. I certainly do not want to hijack his page, but I do want to help people in our community understand what's actually happening in Springfield and abroad. If you're interested in hearing more videos like this, find me on YouTube or Rumble at The X Truth. There, I'm going to try to offer a new perspective on what's really going on in our city from a bird's eye view, so to speak. I want all of our citizens to be informed. I want you to learn the tools to be informed. And I want to try to do that with some humor along the way. If that sounds like something that you're interested in, then show James some love on this video. Like, share, and comment so that the word will get out. Thank you again, James. Be safe. Be informed. Well, there you go. You can find everything in this video through public records to verify everything that's been said in this video is the truth. So with that being said, follow my friend, the X truth on YouTube and he'll have further information going forward on some of this stuff. Some things we'll collaborate with, some things we won't that'll be on his channel. But give him a follow. And uh, I will put a link in the description of this video to his YouTube channel. But until then, this is James, Empty Pockets Garage. I'm out of here.